Hey everyone, in this video I'd like you to show you the fifth round of the Leiden Chess Tournament. And this round I played against quite a surprising opponent because I was on four and a half, no sorry, three and a half points out of four. And I played this young Turkish girl, Sila Kaglar, um, 13 years old and rated a little below 2000. But she used to be the grandmaster of the previous round and some strong players in the rounds before. So she had quite an amazing run up to this this point, and um, I hear she has been European champion on the 12th last year. So yeah, quite a strong opponent, and I was definitely not going to under underestimate her. Um, so yeah, let me show you the game. So I was playing black, and she played e4, and I played e5. Not what I do common, and uh, not what I normally play, but I decided I wanted to do something different here. And she normally plays the Vienna with knight c3. Um, but she played knight f3 this game, so it surprised me a little bit there. But she has played this um, like maybe a year and a half ago as well. So I played knight c6, knight, she played knight c3, and this is something she hasn't played before. Um, so I played knight f6, and after the game, um, I was told that she probably just wanted to go for the four knight scotch and make a draw against stronger opponents. That was her game plan, basically. So she played d4, I took knight takes, and I played bishop c5. Not the most common move, but at least it's a move that keeps the position alive, because the scotch four knights is quite known for his um, equal evaluation of the position. So uh, I was quite happy to play this move, and I surprised her as well with this move. So that was quite nice to get her out of book. And especially since I'm not too familiar in this opening, it's always nice to have your opponent on um, unknown territory as well. So she took on c6, b takes, and she played bishop c4, which is quite an uncommon move. And uh, normal moves to go bishop d3 in this position. So she played bishop c4, and here I was on my own as well. So I decided I would just castle, that looks fine. She castled, and I just thought, well, what's the difference between the bishop on d3 and the bishop on c4? And when I started thinking, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I can try. Uh, because I think this logical moves are rook e8 and d6, I think those are the most common, and I think actually rook e8 should be the most common move here to put pressure on the e-pawn. But I thought, well, what about queen e7? And I had this trick in mind that if she decides to play rook e1, I can take on f2. Yes, it's a bit cheap, but after king takes, I go queen c5 check, win back to bishop. That was my only plan, basically. So I thought, well, rook e1 is the most common way to protect the e-pawn. If she can't get rookie one, she needs to try to figure out what else she can play. And um, she, has to, she has to make a choice between like queen f3, um, which is, I guess is the most logical, but then I can go bishop d4 maybe. And the position gets a bit strange, and that's what I wanted to complicate things a bit. And um, bishop d3, for example, rookie 8 rookie 1 Rook b8, and black is totally fine, I think. Black has a nice initiative, and it's very difficult for black to, uh, for white to develop the pieces. Because this is a very strong bishop, and there are some problems on b2 and c3. So it's not so easy for white here to continue developing. So I thought, well, queen e7, I'll just let her think and see what moves she comes up with. And when I checked after the game, queen e7 was actually not such a bad idea. Um, the computer actually agrees with me, um, beside the fact that I'm also playing for a trick, which is a small chance, but as a matter of fact, she actually played the move rookie one, and which surprised me. And it's actually quite a shame because she played such a good tournament, and she really wanted to play a fighting game. And uh, losing a pawn so quickly is is not really um, not really well. I mean, I don't mind, of course, but it's not really fun for her. And I, I thought the game would be over pretty quickly, but I was so wrong about that. <laughs> so I took the pawn on f2. King takes, queen c5 check, bishop e3, queen takes g4. I thought, well, I'm up a pawn. I have a better position. I have this weak pawn on e4. I can put pressure on. And this game is not going to take long, is what I thought. But I did know I need to stay focused and, and don't make mistakes because she can be dangerous still. I should play king g1. I played d6. I have some developing to do. So my next moves are quite logical, I think. Queen d4. Didn't want to exchange the queens yet, so I played queen e6. The main thing is I don't want to. I don't really mind exchanging queens, but I don't want the bishop to go to d4, attacking the knight, and um, also threatening e5. And once she gets to play e5 and exchange these pawns, for example, 
Then I have some weak stuff over here, and with the opposite color bishops, my advantage is not super clear. So I played queen e6, um, h3, which might have not been totally necessary, but okay. Rook e8, bishop g5, protecting the e pawn. Knight d7 with the plan going queen g6. And then bring my knight to e5, probably c5, bishop b7. Something like this, which looks very healthy in my opinion. So she played rook f1. And here I started to do some strange stuff. So I did not play queen g6. I'm not sure why, because just queen g6. Bishop f4, knight e5. Um, it all goes with tempo because I'm attacking the pawn on h3. If she goes king h1, I can go c5. If she wants to prevent bishop b7 and go queen d5, I can go rook b8, attack the b2 pawn, prepare bishop to b7, of course. And I have a very good position. But for some reason, I didn't play it, and I'm still not sure why. I played the move knight e5 instead. Uh, she played bishop f4. And here I realized that um, she has a trick. And if I play a move like, I don't know, Let's say h6. Uh, she can take on e5. And if I take with the queen, she has queen c4, attacking two pawns. And <laughs> that is actually very annoying at this point. Um, of course, I can exchange the queens and keep the extra pawn, but I mean, this triple pawn is terribly ugly. So they want to go into this. So I thought, wait, this is, this is quite annoying. There's not a very easy way for me to stop this plan. So I thought, well, I'll just go back to d7. Um, after yesterday's game against Indian Grandmaster Shiam, um, where I played a bit too impatient, I thought, well, I can just be patient. 95 wasn't good. Let's move it back to d7, take my time, work on my position, improve my pieces. No need to rush. But I did realize something went a bit wrong, and I, I could see she, she was getting confident out of this. And that's not what I wanted. Of course, so she, she put the rook on e1, I played f6, which might be a bit premature, but I think it's quite okay to block the e pawn. And I actually want to build a pawn structure with all pawns on black squares, and eventually this one here as well, uh, to counter this bishop. So I thought f6 might be a bit too soon, but I thought I would play it anyway later on, so why not now? Just to make sure I don't have to calculate any e5 stuff, because she will constantly continuously try to push the e-pawn and exchange this pawn. So I played bishop g3, I played bishop b7, and one more reason to put my knight on d7 is after bishop b7, queen b4, I have to move knight b6, um, so that my bishop is being left alone and um, the queen is not attacking it. So she played a4, and here I fought for a bit, and I decided to play the move a5, which is not really what I want necessarily, but I think the a5 pawn gets quite weak um, because I can't really protect it and it's it's quite easy to attack now. For example, some move like bishop e1 in the future and the a5 pawn is just very hard for me to defend. I need to rook on a8 but I don't really want to protect this pawn with my rook the entire time. So I figured if I play this move I need to, you know, um, accelerate the position a bit, just um, keep up the pace from this point on. So she played queen d4 and I played c5, queen d1. My plan was to go bishop c6, attack the a pawn, b3, and then play c4. But when I checked this line, I thought it was quite nice and quite thematical. I just attacked this pawn and tried to um, include these moves. So I have this weak b3 pawn and I can bring my rook to b8. Knight to c5, and I can put pressure on this b pawn. That was the entire plan. But then I saw she could play a move like bishop f2, and she might exchange the bishop for the knight. And that's a bit awkward, so I have to move my knight, but he's also controlling the c5 square with the bishop. Um, knight is coming in, some squares, b5, d5. So I suddenly I realized it's not very easy for me to put more pressure on the b3 pawn, even though the plan looks so obvious a few moves back. So, um, I also considered queen c4, um, but I thought you could just go knight b5. But I should have played queen c4 because knight b5, I can go queen f7, protect the c pawn. Knight goes back as well because she needs to protect the a4 pawn, which is under attack. And here I can go queen g6, and this plan queen f7, queen g6 is what I played in the game. But by doing it like this, I win a tempo. 
So that would have been much better. Um, instead I played bishop c6, she played b3 to protect the pawn, I played rook b8. Um, still with this plan in mind, already putting the rook on the b-file to put pressure on the b-pawn. Um, she played rook f5 and I thought she fell into this little tactic again. Uh, because I thought, well, I can just take on e4, can't I? And if she takes back, the rook on f5 is just hanging. So after knight takes, the rook takes, I simply take the rook on f5. But then I saw rook f4 uh, attacking the pinned bishop, I can defend with f5. Knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes. And um, I thought, well, I can take, I can give my queen for two rooks, but then I thought, well, I was up a pawn, now the material's unclear. And now you can see why my pawn on a5 is weak. She has bishop e1 here, attacking the a5 pawn. And that is so incredibly annoying, because I don't want to give her a passed a pawn. And I also don't want to go rook a8, because then I have this rook protecting this pawn the entire game. And that's, that's terrible, she's going to put the bishop here. And then she's targeting this pawn and this pawn. And suddenly it's getting very difficult for black to play. Um, so that's why a5 is not the prettiest move. I still think it was good, but I need to be precise after that. Um, anyway, I can't take on e4. I'm not sure if she, shot, she saw all this. Um, but anyway, I played queen f7. And bishop f2 and queen g6. And now you see I still execute this plan. Um, which I could have done a bit quicker a few moves back. So now I am threatening to take the pawn on e4 because there's no more pin after rook f4 and also there's a checkmate threat on g2. So, um, but here she, she showed me clearly that she saw this idea. Um, so I think she, she should have, uh, she probably would have seen it. No, she probably had seen it before as well. But she played queen d3 and here I was just thinking, wow, she might go knight d5, knight b5. I need to stop this, I don't want a knight on d5. And here I panicked a bit, I was too impatient. I mean, knight on d5 is not the end of the world. I should have just played knight d7. She goes knight d5, I go knight e5, queen d1. I just grab the knight. Queen takes and queen f7. I have the extra pawn, I have a beautiful knight on e5. Um, and as long as this isn't getting too weak, I can once again go for the c4 plan, which I initiated a few moves back. And now I have this pressure on b3 and um, things are starting to look pretty good for black, also because his rook is a bit strange in f5. Uh, but instead I played too impatient, I played rook e5, I just wanted to stop knight e5 at all cost. Um, but it already felt a bit strange to, to exchange these rooks and, and close the e-file. So she took of course, didn't really have a choice. I took with the f pawn, she goes knight b5 and um, I went rook f uh, sorry, I went queen f7, check the pawn, rook f1, queen d7, bishop e1. And here you can see, as I mentioned before, this a5 pawn is getting weak. So I need to um, need to do something else. I just drop this pawn or I have to defend this pawn forever. So I played c4, but I could have played bishop takes b5, pawn takes now rook a8, not just to defend the pawn, but also after bishop d2, for example, I can play c4. Pawn takes and I can play a4. And this a pawn is running quickly, very quickly. It's just like the previous game. Just push your pass pawn, keep the pieces busy, and then you have an, you quickly get an advantage. So I should have played it, and I didn't. I, I played c4 immediately, which is slightly worse. Yeah, but still I'm better in this position. Uh, but not too much though. So. She took on c4, knight takes a4, bishop takes a5. So I had to give back my pawn, uh, which hurt quite a bit. I must admit, I, I just thought this is going to be an easy game and uh, I'm up a pawn after like 10 moves and um, yeah, I should win this quite easily, but I was so wrong about that. So I have to get back to pawn by now. I still have a better pawn structure, so I'm still better, but it's not what I had in mind, obviously. So I played knight c5, queen d1, and here I started calculating, but I did notice I have some back rank issues. And I can just show you by, um, by this line. If I, for example, take on b5, and pawn takes, rook takes, she has bishop takes c7, and um, yeah, I'm just in trouble. I take with the queen, queen d5 check, king h8, rook f8 checkmate. And the reason why um, it's not possible here, because of the queen d5 instead of knight e6, um, so the queen protecting the knight. 
but after bishop takes e7, queen takes, obviously the knight's not more, anymore protected on e6. So there are some back rank issues which I had to solve. So I thought I can go rook c8. If you played knight h7, I thought, well, that's a strange move. You go rook a8, knight takes, queen takes, and I attack the bishop and, and this pawn. And then I realized she could take on c7. I totally missed this move, but so she, so so did she, and that was quite lucky. Um, because queen takes, queen d5 check, and um, losing the rook and the game. So queen f3, also a tricky move I missed. Well, I saw it, but it, then it was already too late. Um, couldn't do anything about it. So queen d7, bishop d2, queen e6, have to defend, but still have a better position, because um, quite obviously these pawns are very weak. And this bishop still has issues against all these pawns on the dark squares. It's quite hard to find a good target for this bishop. So she played queen e2. I played h6, putting one extra pawn on black, trying to limit this bishop even more, and more importantly, getting a square for my king. Luft, as we would say. But she played bishop b4, and of course I don't want to exchange this knight for the bishop, so knight d7, queen d3, and c5. even more limiting this bishop. I also was looking at the move rook a4. Um, but there's something wrong with this, because after queen b3, um, I wanted to go knight b6. I see defending the rook and attacking the c4 pawn. I thought this is looking very good for me, but she can go bishop takes d6. Very nice move. Um, I obviously can't take with the pawn because queen takes b6. And if I take with the queen, suddenly c5 check is winning the game. Because I just lose my queen. So that was rook a4 in this position, so not working, so I had to go c5. But once again, I like how these pawns are making this bishop so bad because it's very hard for the bishop to just find a good target because the pawns are so well protected. She played bishop c3. I played knight b6, and this is quite nice, because if she tries to put some counter play with attacking the d6 pawn, I just go knight takes c4, I protect this pawn, and this knight is impossible to attack by the rook, it just can't reach the knight. Well, it can, but it takes a little while. So, um, with this move I can win a pawn and protect my own pawn. So, she played rook b1, and this is what she played very well, I think, because she was looking for active moves and activity. And that's something people don't often do in endgames. They try to defend and hold their position together. But she realized, even at her age, that um, it's important to, to keep playing active, active moves. And that's what makes her so dangerous as well, I think. The rook b a very good move, because if I take on c4, I'm slightly concerned about rook b7. Um, because I do win a pawn, but I don't really have a good follow-up yet. I thought, well, I'll just play rook a6 first. Um, she went king h2, I went king h7, just prophylactic. Because if her pieces are coming in, I prefer my king to be in h7 instead of g8. So I limit the checks she has. So rook b3, and now I took on c4. She played rook b7. Okay, 7th rank, but not too dangerous at the moment. I played rook a3, rook c7. And I thought... Now I just play knight b2 and um, get a very good position, but apparently she has a draw here, a forced draw actually. She can go queen f3, and that's a strange move because I totally didn't see the move. Um, I thought, well, I can just go knight a4, but now she can go queen f8. Threatening checkmate on g7, so I'll go queen g6. Now she can go rook c8. Threatening checkmate on g8 or h8, so I have to move my queen. And for example, queen g5, she can give a check, king g6, rook f8, and suddenly I'm close to being checkmated, but um, I can still grab the piece, but now she has a perpetual. And that's a draw. And there's just nothing I can do about it, strangely enough. So, because after queen f3, if the queen moves to f8, and suddenly the bishop is unpinned, so my knight is under attack. Which means it's all pretty forcing what White's doing here. So, knowing this trick, which is just a computer line, so I, I can't really blame myself for missing it. Uh, neither can she, I think. 
Um, but I should have played knight b6 instead. Not with tempo. Um, but apparently attacking the queen is not really useful for me because that's helping her actually. Um, but now if she goes queen f3, I can go queen g6. And the big difference is after queen f8, I can take the bishop. And there's no more rook c8 because the knight is protecting the c8 square. It's a little difference, but it's, it's super important for the evaluation of the entire position. So knight b6. Um, and if she just plays anything else like queen g3, then just protect the pawn. Um, I can just get my knight back to c4. And now I can go knight b2. And now we get the same line, but with my queen on f6. Obviously, I'm blocking this queen f3 move. And also queen g3 is not scary because I'm just defending my pawn on g7. So, yeah, that's one opportunity she missed there. So knight b2, uh, she played queen g3. It's a logical move, the only move I checked, actually. I played queen f6, queen e1. And um, here I think I played it pretty precise, uh, if I can say so. Um, my plan was initially to go knight c4. And now the cute thing is, uh, she really wants to go queen d3 to attack the knight and, and protect the bishop. But she can't, obviously. Um, which means she's in, she's in some sort of stukzwang because she can't really move the queen anymore. And if she moves the bishop, she activates my rook. But still, bishop d2 is possible. And I also wanted to uh, stop this move. So I decided I can go queen f4 check first. And it's quite nice. But if she goes g3, which looks very dangerous because it attacks the queen, and also my knight is under attack because the bishop is unpinned. But now I have queen f3. And she takes knight rook e3. Attacking the queen and with rook e2, uh, a lot of checkmate threats. So this is quite quite a nice intermediate move for me, I think. But after queen f4, she can't go g3 as mentioned, so she has to go king g1. And now I go knight c4. And now I'm also blocking bishop d2. Which means... Um, Trying to paralyze the bishop, what I've been trying the entire game, um, is going pretty well so far. The bishop has no squares, well, only a1, but it's not the prettiest square, of course. And my knight and rook and queen are super active and totally dominating the white pieces at the moment. The, rook, the white rook on c7 is not really doing much either. So I should play rook d7, um, queen g5. Once again, I could have played knight e3 immediately, but I thought this is just a bit more clever. Um, King h2, knight e3, going for the checkmate on g2. So now she needs to protect this one and the bishop. And she just needs only a queen for that. And that's not going to work out. So she played g3. I took the pawn on c2. Queen d2. Queen takes, bishop takes. And here, there are probably many ways to win the endgame because it's totally winning for black. Um, but I must say, I really like my final moves because it really shows... Um, how badly the white bishop is being dominated in this pawn structure. I played knight d4, and the bishop has no squares to go. I'm threatening rook a2 to win the bishop. Um, all these squares are covered. So are these. Um, and the problem after a move like bishop e1 is that I can play knight f3 check and win the bishop. And um, if she goes bishop c1, I can give a check, rook a2 for example, and um, if the king goes somewhere, I can put my rook on a1, pinning the bishop, winning the game. So all these uh, squares in the first rank are unsafe either. So it's quite nice to see this bishop being so dominated by the knight and the rook. But she played king h1, um, stopping rook a2, but now I can just give a check, get the king back to the second rank, and play rook a2. Cute finish of the game if you ask me. So, um, yeah, after winning the pawn in the opening, uh, I thought it was going to be a very easy game, but <laughs> obviously I was mistaken, and I wasn't even um, focusing less or, or thinking, well, I'm here already, it's, it's over. Uh, but she just played very well, and I was just a bit inaccurate in the, um, some important moments. And I was just too eager to control the position that I went a bit too far to d this game, and that's how I gave her a few chances. After I played a5, I had to be quick and precise, and I wasn't. So maybe a5 wasn't the best move, and I should have played it slow. But objectively, it's quite good, but I missed a good follow-up. Endgame was very exciting. She missed a draw. Um, very hard to see, but still. Um, but all in all, it was quite an interesting game, and a tough fight. And um, 
yeah, of course, very happy with the win and uh, also keep an eye on this, this girl because she's going to be good, um, really showing fighting chess, fighting spirit. I had to beat her like five times to win the game. So, um, yeah, big compliment to my opponent and uh, I hope she does well in the tournament. So, um, yeah, that's it for the fifth round. So, four and a half out of five. And um, games are getting better, so quite happy. So, that's going to be it. And um, thank you for watching.